Hello friends, family, and other creatures of the sea. Uh, welcome back to a high-level best of three of StarCraft 2 between Oliveira here, the current world champion, playing for DKZ Gaming, versus Solar, who's in the bottom right and is playing for on side. This is like an O? I don't quite know what this logo is. There's an S in there and an O. So the only thing we're missing is an N. Because then you have on I think the middle part is the O, but then what's the N? Maybe it's just OS, on site. Yeah, that also makes some sense. Yeah, cool logo. I do think it looks pretty tight. Anyway, um, I want the DKZ logo. It's a little bit like a tribal tattoo in a way. Then with DKZ and the lightning bolt, the purple tail for the, yeah, whatever. Um, let's not focus on this. We're here on Babylon, and Babylon is an interesting map. Why? Not because of any of the real map features, but because of the environment. There are four Urubus on this map. Uh, it's a dinosaur looking bird. Uh, it usually spends most of its time just eating grass or, uh, you know, uh, moving around the, these, 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 these wastelands. And, and also because of the trees, look at this. Unrealistic trees is what I like to think of them as. Purple, fluorescent pink, fluorescent green. I don't even know what this color is. What is, it? is it like copper or something? And you have some like yellowish trees. It's like you never see trees with this many different colors this close to one another. I've never seen that in my life. And usually trees, they're, they're fairly uniform in the way they look, you know, in a certain area. Like maybe if you go uh, further up a mountain, the color of the tree will change in a different type of tree because, you know, they're more adapted to that type of climate. What is this? I've never seen this many different trees so close. Maybe in like a, like a botanical garden or something, you'll see something like this. Or in a, sometimes you have these like these, not not the old school parks, you know, but like a, a, a newer park that's been built in like the last five years, and the mayor wanted to have something cool, so they put in like a a little different tree area with some. Where he bought some expensive trees, you know. This guy had a budget for the park of like 50,000. He spent 35,000 buying trees with it. And the rest he spent on posters of his own face. Wasting the taxpayers' dollars. That's what he's doing. We don't want these colored, weird looking trees. We want, we want, we want normal park trees. I don't even I know nothing about trees. An oak or something. Is that a tree that you get in a park? God, I freaking hate that I know so little about these things. I feel like it would be fairly simple for me to learn the names of a couple of trees. And then be the annoying prick that every time you go somewhere, you're like, oh, yeah, this is an oak over there. It's also the only uh, willows. Willows is also, I think, uh, a name of a tree. Willow? A willow tree. I, I do know more tree names in Dutch. Two or three more. <laughs> three. Um, yeah, I, that's, that might be my project for the rest of this year. Learning the names of five trees or something like that. And, and being able to recognize them. I always feel like it shows competence in life. If you know these, these types of uh, simple things, you know. It's the same with people that know not a lot about birds. Like there, is a, there really is a sweet spot. It's, I feel like knowing stuff about trees and birds is really the same as bowling. You know, if you... If you go bowling and you throw like 130 to 140 points, I think that's pretty cool. But if you throw like 180 points and you're a freaking bowling nerd, you know, you bring your own shoes and uh, cleaning your own ball, like with your, your your special stuff, that's not cool anymore. It's the same with birds. Like if you you need to it, to remain in the cool zone, you need to know a a little bit about it. You know, you need to the most common birds. You're like, oh look, that's this one. I actually don't know any bird names in English at all. And, and then people are like, wow, that's impressive. He's like, yes, because he likes to nest in the willow trees, which you can say. Because you also know a little bit about trees. You don't want to be a bird nerd or a tree nerd either. It's dangerous. It's the same with StarCraft 2. You should be capable of knowing the different races and the basic unit, the zealot, the marine, and the, and the zergling. But then if you know the names of things like hellions and reapers, you're definitely too far into the hobby. There's no point anymore. Life is gone as you know it. <laughs> um, we have... <laughs> We have a standard opener here coming out of Oliveira. It was a triple CC, double Banshee with a decent amount of cars as well. One, two, five, eight. Um, Sadler decided... I was going to say Oliveira did a good job denying creep here, but he hasn't really denied any creep yet. I think these are the first tumors that are now starting to go down. 
And he's killed four tumors so far. I think two of them were just over there. There's not really a lot of creep denial. Uh, the double banshee's not putting in too much work, honestly. One worker has died so far. Started with a very clean early game in the, the starting minutes here of this uh, of this series. Except the creep threat. Yeah, like I said, I was gonna say, oh man, Oliveira had some great creep, uh, some creep denial this game, but sometimes with creep denial, all you have to do is just show up and the creep isn't there. You know, the, the opponent didn't even try. And you can still claim that as a victory. I think it's... I remember back in the day when I used to play amateur football, sometimes the opposing team wouldn't show up and you could claim as a, claim it as like a 6-0 victory. Yeah, it's like, oh, that's not bad. Then you'd have a 6-0 victory. That's kind of what happened here with Oliveira. You know, he showed up, the opponent wasn't there with the creep. He's like, oh, I did a good job denying that creep. I'll put that on my CV. I'm gonna go for a push because this is, this is one of those areas where creep is actually really important. I've seen this so many times. If the Zerg does not get creep on top of this this little cliffy cliffy hill area, it can be super difficult to break if there's one or two tanks. Hellions are moving forward as well. I like the way that these Hellions are being used. Kind of being controlled together here with the Marines. As this tank now sieges up. How many Marines were there? It's, it's like 18? No, this is more like 13 Marines. Not that many, but might actually be enough. Centrifugal hook's not quite done yet. Three tumors are being taken out. Hellions still together with this. This position is freaking bonkers, though, let's face it, huh? This is a good position here. I like this. I really do. 1-1 one, one is about to finish up as well here for Oliveira, so he's going to have an upgrade lead. 3rd CC is... Oh, sorry. 3rd CC. 4th CC is now on the way, as these double banshees are heading towards the 5th base at the same time as a drone starts heading towards that 5th base. Marines looking for some damage combat shield not quite done yet. I wonder why Solar doesn't believe he can just clear this. I would... I think that you could just clear this by going in. I mean, he has so many units. Yes, freaking centrifugal. Who's perhaps wanted to wait for plus one? It's not quite going to do that now, though. He wants to clear this position ASAP. Link's going in first. That means that these helmets are getting quite a bit of damage done. Bane Link's not really crashing in at a high pace at all. And Solar is going to clean this up, but is floating a crap ton of money. Is down in supply right now and has something to deal with in the main base. This queen will fall. No, drones are being targeted down first instead. Six drones have gone down already. Couple more wheel dies. These links that are streaming in right now will also end up falling. This was a really nice trade for, uh, for Oliveira, who is up about, what, 20 supply all of a sudden? who has better upgrades, or at least quicker upgrades, now starts working on this hatchery. No fifth hatch. Probably does mean that it's going to be difficult for Solar to spend all of his cash. So he has been struggling with that already so far in this in this game. This is a massive push out, and once again, no creep on top of this little hill. There's hardly any banes as well. Solar's trying to fight off creep. That is obviously impossible. Something Dark might do right now is just send all of his links across the map. Go for a massive counterattack. Now, there are some Marines at home, so probably wouldn't have worked either. I'm just telling you, that's what I think Dark would have done. Um, as uh, Solar instead is going in for a, a defensive setup here. Coming in with Banelinks from, well, just one side, really. Nothing from the far left. Oh, no. Queen's blocking the Banelinks as well. Not capable of uh, smoothly flowing through the ranks there. Oh, and this tank, look at that. 5 HP. 12 kills, continues getting a couple more shots in. Uh, I mean, at this point, Micro isn't even necessary anymore for Oliveira. He's just standing there and shooting. Isn't even targeting down the Banes, I don't think so. Well, that... Nah, I don't even think that was target firing down. He's just A-moving it, and Solar is completely dead at this point. Down two upgrades, down massively in army supply. And, yep, GG gets called. Our current player wins game number one here on Babylon. Game number two will be played over here on Grasvan. This is also known as the uh, the ultimate camping map. You hate to say it, but it, it is true. If you're into camping, um, then this is a good map. And I don't mean with a little tent out in the woods. I more mean sitting with tanks and doing nothing. And this is a very good map for you. You have like a couple of positions for tanks that, that cover so much area. Uh, walling over here is insane. You basically get like six bases for free at some point. And then the seventh can be difficult to take, but I mean, once Terran has six base, they have plenty of cash. So yeah, it's a very, very solid map here for uh, for Terran camping.
I wonder what would be the, the best map for real camping, though. I feel like I would want to camp on Babylon. The Urubu doesn't seem so dangerous, and it would be a cool bird to see. There's many different types of trees in a very small area. I think I'd be down with that. I think I'd, I'd probably... Altitude is also cool, though. It's cool. It's always snowing. You could make snow angels. The thing with snow is, though, people always romanticize snow. It's like, oh, snow on Christmas. It's like, this is fun for five minutes. It's like, oh, it's all white. White Christmas. That's crazy. And then you go outside and you go snow shoveling or you look at it. It's like kids. You're, 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 they terrorize the neighborhood with, with snowballs, you know, waiting around every corner. Dish! Snowball in the face. And hopefully there's no nothing else in it, you know, like dog poop or something. So when it explodes over you, poof, there's more. This never happened to me, but I'm just making up scenarios that are plausible to happen to at least one of you. It's like you slip and slide. It's, it's just, I think snow is, is one of these overrated things. I remember as a kid, I really liked it though. I also am a little bit, the, yeah, I, I think snowball fights, I still think would be good to have. But you'd probably have these adults that are absolute tryhards. You know, you get these guys that played baseball for all their life at like a semi-professional level and then took a course in snowball making, you know, when they were 19. Like they're making these snowballs, they're feeling harder than a baseball and they're throwing them right, you know, aiming them right in between your eyes. Yeah, actual murder weapon in the hands of uh, some of these guys. That would be the problem, I think. You see, it's no respect. There were always these kids that saw in the snowball fights, you know, that that left their 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 snow their snowballs just a little bit too long, so they really turned very icy. You know, they squeeze them a bit more. You say, no, the, part of the fun is is that it explodes and there's snow everywhere. Part of fun is not that if you hit someone, they will never be capable of walking again, you moron. We all know exactly what that kid turned out to be. You know, he's a complete idiot. Don't know what he's doing now. He's, he's a prick. Prick kids, that's what they were. We all know them. We all had them. You know, and if you went into a new neighborhood, within 10, 15 minutes, you immediately knew who that prick kid was as well there. You know, you, they always made themselves known. They always did. My neighborhood, it was me. I was the one with the eyeballs. All right. Uh, Hellions are popping in over here, taking out a lot of these drones at a very high pace. Cars are going to end up falling, though. That's six drones versus four cars. This is not a trait that I approve of. Um, I haven't written Art of the Deal, but I do know a little bit about trading. And this was not quite brilliant. This was not quite brilliant. Solar... Ooh. It's going to lose a couple more workers. Well, a couple more. It's going to lose two more workers. Well, legitimately a couple then. Two more workers for two more cars. That is once again a very poor trade. Overlord is going to get taken out during all of that though, which is nice. Maybe this Ovi is in trouble as well. There, there's multiple problems with Hellion trades like this. Um, there's actually... There's three reasons... Oh, I could make a YouTube video. Three reasons why the Hellion should stay alive. Reason number one. The Hellion uh, is a unit that has a lot of value later on in the game with pushes, specifically if you have tanks, like we saw in the last game. Uh, Pre-centrifugal hooks, so pre-bailing speed, the Hellion actually provides a lot of value for the Terran army. And afterwards it can turn into a helmet and defend tanks still provide a lot of value for the Terran army. Reason number two. Reason number two is uh, also interesting. The moment you lose all your Hellions, and you're not playing any real air threat like uh, like Banshees anymore. There is no pressure on the Zerg to ever build links until they have to for the first two medivacs. And right now there's so many links out already that even for the first two medivacs, you don't really have to build links anymore. So you can basically get to the drone count that you'd want to. And in Solar's case, that's going to be 74, 75. Now, reason number three is that li uh, Ling run by become stronger because Hellions can be left at home to deal with them. So now you have your, your three reasons as to why losing Hellions is bad. This was my TED talk. Don't forget to like button and subscribe. I don't think they say that at the end of the TED talk, do they? I hope I get invited to do a TED talk one day. 
I just talk about Starcraft strategy. Yeah, everyone will be very confused. I feel like that's the thing with TED Talks, you know? In the past, it was very general concepts. And I, I feel like, I'm not saying I would have seen all the old school TED Talks, but you'd seen most of them in your head. You know, it's like how to make money could be like the name of a TED Talk in, in 2012, you know, or uh, how, how to best live life. But nowadays you have TED Talks, which is like how to thrive most as someone living in the southern part of Rotterdam while simultaneously juggling and driving a unicycle. And there's like 18,000 views on it because somehow there are 18,000 people very interested in juggling on a unicycle in the southern part of Rotterdam. It's like, wow, well, did not know that it's such a thriving community of unicyclists. So yeah, I do believe that me just talking about StarCraft strategies on a TED talk would be freaking hilarious. Although I'm not quite sure if I could get over the embarrassment of having to talk about something that no one else cares about while you're sitting there. You know, because there's an audience often, right? I feel like I could get it. I feel like that TED talk is within my reach if I'd really want to. But then the people that aspire to have a TED talk are the wrong type of people to give a TED talk. I feel like as well. You need to be asked for it. That if you can sign up for it, and nah, I don't want it. It doesn't feel special. Uh, this game does feel pretty special, though. Oliveira is uh, multitasking in three different locations at the same time, and that means that Solar is forced to multitask at three different locations at the same time. But Oliveira is doing a significantly better job so far. Seventeen more drones are on the way here as Infestation Pit is coming out. Uh, pneumatized carapace as well is on the way over here of course the overlord speed creep has been uh, diminished by quite a bit fourth base is very late here or fourth fifth base is very late here for solar as this mine is going to connect with a couple of links and now these links are going to connect with that mine that did not end well for the mine fourth base finally goes down for olivier is really late actually but i'm okay with it i really am okay with it He's going to continue uh, putting under pressure here. Tutu is significantly faster than his opponent. Once again, is going for a triple threat setup. Very different from a lot of the other Terrans who prefer playing double, double sided things. But the triple threat, I freaking love it. As so the Medivac uh, moves over towards this far right side, tank and mines are setting up. Tutu finishing up in 10 seconds from now. No target fire yet on that Bane. That Bane, oh this guy. Look at that guy! One HP left remaining. Okay, he's gonna get sniped now by that one Marine that was still chasing. So these double boys are now going in. Double Medifacts with the Marine boys going in. This Medifact on the far right side is also flying in at a simultaneous time. This still has potential to go in towards the main. That's indeed what will end up happening. So we do have the eight Marine drop over here. Uh-oh-oh! We have three groups of units. It's always very difficult to deal with for sure. Three groups of units is, uh, is absolutely key. They all do get cleaned up and... Now there's only one group of units left. This is in a nasty position. Oliveira used all of those distractions to basically put himself in a spot where I'm not even quite sure if he can ever be broken. He's up two upgrades as well, which is definitely going to help. He's denying one base. He is within arm's reach of this one as well. So technically could deny two bases in the near future. Hey, what are these queens doing? Uh, being uh, shooed away here by these Marines. Marines do need to pick up, no? And just piss off. He's only moving forward with five or six. That's so cute. That, that really is just a cute amount of marines, isn't it? Oof, trying to snipe these uh, creep two more. Doesn't quite get it. Three three on the way. A couple more barracks as well. Solar could go for a run by. Solar could also go for not a run by and just go for a flank. <gasps> There's a bunch of mines here on the on the side. Oliveira decides to send back home a bunch of his marines, a bunch of his mines. He's going to be absolutely fine, isn't he? Yeah. I'm not worried about Oliveira here. I'm zero worried about him actually at the moment. Seismic Spines is about to finish up. Do we have any lurkers though? No, there's zero lurkers. There's 120 links. That's a lot of links. Adrenal Gland's not quite done yet. Should probably wait for that. Oh, he's going to try and clear some of these bad boys. Doesn't quite get it. Viper is out as well. Is right now gathering some energy. Oh, mine's very far forward. Do not quite get the connections with the Zerg army that they want. Oh, that's a full uh, full on siege. If uh, if Solar had decided to attack at that point, that could have been pretty scary. Now we have Adrenal Glands about to finish up. That's going to be the timing, I think, that uh, that Solar is looking for. 
Does he have a setup? He has a setup over here. There's no mines in the back. There are a couple near the tank still. Oh, this is a good start of the fight. Blinding Cloud is connecting with a bunch of these tanks as well. Only one tank was left shooting. And this is a complete cleanup. Actually, that's a cleanup and a half. Are there still units at home? Hardly any. There's a couple of mines. They need to get big shots and they won't. At least that mine won't. Adrenal Glance is putting in a lot of work over here. So we have the redrop. I think that Oliveira might have just accidentally died. He's going to end up losing a couple of these workers at the... Well, couple. He's going to lose every single worker at the third right now. As Solar decides to pull back. Still has a massive bank as well. Where did all this money come from? Felt like he was struggling. But I guess Oliveira really wasn't pushing much. Oliveira was just in that position in general. And denied mining on the fifth. But apparently not good enough. Double drop heading out towards the top side as ghost production does start. Liberators are on the way and we do have a third factory as well coming in over here. So that is somewhat exciting. We have plus two vehicle weapons. Don't forget with plus three vehicle weapons, um, you can very often do something very cool with Hellbats. Um, if you have the blue flame as well, you can one shot every single link that ever existed, which is uh, that's a that's a cool thing to have. These lurkers are just uh, pumping around right now, not doing very much of anything. Trying to defend some outside bases against uh, against weird drops. S33 is about to finish up for our Zerg as well. And I mean, at this point, if you're Solar, all you really need to do is just clear planetaries again and again and again and again. And I think that's what's going to end up happening here as well. Yep, he goes in, um, starts fighting, well... Uh, this orbital command banelings go into the planetary banelings go into the scvs and uh, orbitals are being sniped by this uh, little hydra force uh, max out rinse and repeat max out rinse and repeat like that's uh, that's just going to be it you know that is just going to be it i, I just don't think there's anything that Oliveira can do to truly stabilize he's trying to desperately get out more and more tanks liberators are definitely a good call problem is just that he also needs to defend this base and i don't think he currently can does not have a sensor tower missed that the links went into this direction and you probably want like 10 more banes over here and then you just go for it i think it would be good to do i really do believe so meanwhile solar has the bank of a lifetime I do feel like he should probably continue going in at a pretty high pace oh he's gonna get the space 100 gg gets called Oliveira taps out and that's going to tie up this series with a one-to-one -one score. Game number three here on Royal Blood. Oliveira doesn't quite feel the same confidence that he did in the first two games. So he decides to send two workers across the map. And maybe he feels a lot of confidence in this particular... What is this positioning? What? <laughs> what? <laughs> oh no! What is that? <laughs> he wanted to proxy them in the natural, didn't he? He wanted to proxy them in the natural so bad. Oh my god! This is terrible. This is the worst. Oh my god, that's the worst case scenario. This 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 SEV movement though. If I were Solar, I'd be absolutely, absolutely going bonkers. This SEV has been the most lucky SEV in the entire world. Oh, okay, no, no, it hasn't. Come on, needs to go in one more time. Oh, oh, -hoo -hoo -hoo! oh, there we go, there we go. Gets the kill. That's worth it. It's gonna try to see if we can clear this one, but obviously can't. Um. Reaper starts one minute and 43 seconds into the game. Is this the bunny build? I don't know what the bunny build is. Maybe bunny is known for... <laughs> yeah, secret build. This is one of the this is one of these secrets that no one cares about, you know? It's just like you can keep your secret. So I have actually zero interested in this. <laughs> nice try this time this this reaper arrives at about the same time as a barracks from home would have sent it across the map oh my god this is so bad for olivia this is such a bad start that's so sad maybe the bunny build is where you send your SUVs across the map you got scouted and then you just have to go back home 
Oh, this is not looking good. All I know is that next time Oliveira tells me he has an interesting secret that I that I know that I shouldn't really care. It's, it's, it's literally zero interesting for me. Factory is on the way. With a reactor, starport coming out, it's double gas. CC finishes up 302, so that's about 12, 13 seconds too late. I mean, for no real reason, Oliveira is just gonna be uh, about, about a quarter of a minute late on everything, right? And that is, that is painful. That, there's really not that much I can say about it, except that's just painful. Um, yeah. I did, in my mind, this game, this game is over. But it isn't over, over, but it, it looks really, really bad. Like, it's a significant amount of money that you've lost. It it, it really is. And, and all your timings are off. Uh, he's getting a fast 30 CC. I'm kind of surprised by that. That he can afford all of that. I guess he just doesn't have any units. So he's not going to get supply blocked. That's usually one of the issues. But because his everything count is so ridiculously low, he, he probably won't have that issue. Reaper's looking for some damage. He's, he's really just not going to find. Oh, actually got three kills. What did you kill? A drone and two links. Yeah, I'm. I'm really curious what the plan is going to be for Oliveira. Um, maybe play like a very kind of passive style and hope that you can get into it. Maybe go for an all-in and hope that your opponent is falling asleep. But all-ins, if you're hitting basically 10, 15 seconds late every single time, are just significantly worse, right? They really are. And it's not just that the all-in is later, like everything is going to be late like this first. Hellion run by is later than it should be. Uh, it's gonna get absolutely nothing. Oh, this is just... Okay, this is actually over. I think this is legitimately over right now. Oh, that's such a sad way to end this series. I felt like Oliveira was playing really well as well. This uh, orbital command is going to move over to the third base, I assume. There's a Raven on the map. Look at this, 52 workers to 36. There's no extra barracks yet. Solar's probably thinking about taking a fourth right now. I mean, he should be thinking about taking a fourth. He really should be. Yeah, there we go. It's got to be 60 workers to 38. There's not going to be any... Oh, almost dies. 5 HP remaining. 11 more drones coming in. Yeah, 6 more. 2 Evos. He's getting Evo before Layer as well, because you can definitely get away with that at this point. And it's just the correct call. It's just the correct call. Meanwhile, on the side of Oliveira, we have two more barracks, two more eBays, and most likely two more refineries as well. And now creep tumors are being taken out one by one. Poof, poof, poof. Plus one melee as well as plus one carapace here going on. That is interesting to see. Oh, is it interesting? It's pretty standard actually. Never mind. It's not interesting at all. I mean, this game, it's a 30, 30 supply deficit. I, it's going to be freaking hard. I'm. Whenever in this type of situation, you, you have to wonder what the, the correct course of action is, right? Like, is it to just sit at home and kind of kind of take whatever the opponent can throw at you? Or do you still want to be aggressive out on the map with a tank push? I don't think you want to be aggressive out with a tank push. But maybe, of course, you want to get your marines on the map. Deny creep with your Hellions. Like, these are... These are honorable goals, I think. You know, these are these are fine to do. He's actually doing a very good job denying creep here. Are you really doing a fine job at it? That is somewhat surprising to me. Combat shield has not quite started yet. That is a mistake. So there's no reason to not want a quicker combat shield. And the longer the game goes, maybe the better it will be here for Oliveira. But Solar is just I mean, he's he's setting up for something, isn't he? He's, he's defending the first marine push with 75 workers, 1-1 one, one upgrades, and like freaking 12 banelings or so. Like he's, <clears throat> He could have probably drawn up to 85 and be completely fine. He probably could have drawn up to 92 and be completely fine, if I'm being honest with you. Like we could be on our way to Hive right now. Solar's playing this safe, but I'm not sure if Solar's playing it safe or if he's going for a 1-1 one, one timing attack here. I think it might be the second, actually. I think Solar wants to do something. 
I really do believe it. He wants to clear this first push, then go for a timing attack. Here come the Marines. Marines are most likely going to get stopped here by this Ling Bane army. Double pickup. Yeah, I mean... One centrifugal hooks finishes up right now. You just walk in. You kill. That's what, that's what I would think, no? You walk in and you go for the kill. Creep spread is actually fairly mediocre out of Solar. Uh, that is the one thing we really have to give Oliveira credit for this entire series. Is that his denial of creep spread has been really, really good. And of course, a Raven does help. But 18 tumors in an 8-minute game where you lose your first two Hellions for free. Yeah, that's pretty tight. Fourth base is not quite here yet. It almost feels like a two-base all-in. Or a two-base, a three-base all-in. That can be it. Overlord just kind of pumping around over here on the right side. Boom, be -doom. Another scan as a bunch of tumors will get cleaned. Is Oliveira setting up for a 2-2 two -two push here? On three bases, five barracks, double factory tank. I think that's actually what's happening. Hive is fairly late for Solar. Now, I'm not saying that it's possible. I'm just telling you what I'm seeing. And this, this area is quite open, right? I guess there's no creep, I mean. Like, it's actually quite closed off, so good for tanks. And there's no creep, so that is double good. Solar wants to go in here. Or is thinking about going in. Has allowed Oliveira a maxed out army right now. And here comes the push out. We're about 50 seconds away from 2-2 finishing. This is a large army. I mean, it's maxed. It's 127 supply. Ideally, Soldar goes in with a run by right now, all of his links, and has a bunch of Banes to stall on his own side of the map. Here we go. Banes are indeed coming in. Anti armor missile barely manages to connect. Here comes the base trade. And I mean, this should be such a, a clean win for Solar. He can just give up this fifth base, move over towards that far left side where there still is a fourth base. Don't forget how far Solar really is ahead here. Does need to morph a couple more Banelings and start sending in Banelings in squads of five. Uh, Anti-Armor actually connecting with a lot of this. That could be painful. Now goes in with all of his links. This seems like a, a slight error. Usually you just want to trickle in Banelings the entire time. Uh, did not end up busting his opponent's natural. Is instead just going back home. 2-2 two, two upgrades versus 2-2 two, two upgrades. Anti-Armor Missile once again is going to hit. Baneling count is 38. This is not the world's greatest flank, but it probably is good enough. Um, actually, there's a lot of tanks still in the back. Solar is kind of getting blasted in this fight. And now reinforcements start moving in as well because he didn't bust this depot wall. He could have cleared absolutely everything on the other side of the map. But instead, he didn't. He only came from two sides, did not come from the back there. And the tanks in the back were dealing so freaking much damage. 20 kills, 14 kills, 70 kills, 9 kills, and 6 kills. That is a lot of kills. I can't add all of that up that quickly in my head, but that's a high number. It's at least double digit. <laughs> uh, I, I think Oliveira might actually be in almost a playable position here. Well, he's ahead. He's ahead in supply. In, in army supply, significant amount. Tanks all in siege at the same time. That is pretty risky, Oliveira. You do not want to do that. Soldar still has a lot of cash in the bank, though. Can... Ooh... Did I just see an Ultra Cavern? I did just see an Ultra Cavern. And that means that Ultras could be, uh, could be built as well. Ultras against Marines. Now that is a fight that you don't want to see if you're a Marine. Like they use Ultras for, for target practice as well. Like just friendly Ultras, you know? Ones that have moved away from the Zerg. Yeah, you can use my shell to, for target practice. Like I don't feel it anyway. I think Marines do like negative damage to the Ultra disc. Have one marine shoot for like 10 hours at an ultra. It will be itchy. Anti-armor hit somewhere. Ooh, actually with a decent chunk of uh, these units. First two ultras, where are they? From the main? Okay, one over here. That's going to help a bit more. At the same time, this gold is being taken out as all well. Solar actually faltering under the pressure. This is such a weird way to lose. This game was completely over after the start. This game was completely over after the mid game. And this game should have still been completely over. But instead, it is not. And now it might be completely over. But in the other direction. Ultra is not being managed here. And will go down against these tanks. 
without chitinous plating it's not quite as good chitinous plating is about to finish up as uh, i do believe we still have one ultra yeah one ultra is over here now it's coming in the next two are not quite here yet look at the ultra go it's going ham it's going it's going hard but i don't quite think it's going to be enough no it won't be oh my god ww as it's time for Oliveira to send in those questions marks now as uh, this was a very questionable loss very very questionable all right that is going to be it for me today thanks all so much for watching i do hope you enjoyed this if you did don't forget to hit the like button subscribe to the channel and hopefully i'll see all of you next time for a new video look at that units lost app 11k to 21k that's not okay all right i'll see y'all bye bye